Okay, I'm back with Dan, the, the inventor that's been doing it for over 30 years, and he's still happy. He's still got a smile on his face because he, he loves his business, but it's not an easy business. Dan, I want to talk about some of the products that you've done and, and maybe some of the first ones so they can kind of see the range of what you created and what you brought to market. So let's start at the very beginning when you were at Discovery Toys, and I remember that company, and they had some really nice design products. Can you show me something that you, you did yeah, for them? Uh, well, I started as an industrial designer, and they were a freelance design job. I answered an ad in the San Francisco Chronicle, you know, a real newspaper, and, you know, I remember circling it a whole bit, and they needed a freelance industrial designer, so I met with them and started designing things like this uh, cute little baby rattle, chewable, chewable little ears. It's got peanuts in the belly because it's an elephant, a little bit of sense of humor, uh, <laughs> you know, and just obviously I say babies don't know the difference, but parents do. Okay. And so I think my sensibility of just designing toys that were whimsical, uh, tactile, things that, you know, I had a humor to them, obviously spinning, twisting, flicking, things that later, Maybe these were the precursors to Bop It. I always say was working on all the, I had several rattles that I designed, but I think the idea that my focus was textures and tactile things. Um, out of that, I didn't actually work for them. It was freelancing. There was a concept that I had that was for, we were working on a line of, they wanted new sand toys. And I was at the beach trying to, and I was watching kids dig and, and they, would tell, dig. they would tell you, I mean, because this was a freelance, they would say, we want this. They had kind of a hit list of things that competitors were doing. Okay. Uh, like they wanted a marble track because they had been importing one and they wanted their own proprietary one. So I actually created this thing called Marble Works Grand Prix, uh, which is back there kind of hidden. But it's it was the first idea that I'd say, or I, I added that you could race marbles. They had a starting gate, a finish gate. They could pass each other. So okay. I would add innovation uh, but it was freelance. I, well, I wasn't inventing and pitching things. I was being inventive within my role as a freelancer. Uh, but I sort of would sort of add a lot of touches. So if it, whatever it was, I wouldn't just design a new one aesthetically. I would try to come up with features that made it more marketable. So when they said we want to do sand digging, you know, some new shovels and things, I wanted to think of a new way to do a shovel. So okay. I had this idea uh, of doing a shovel that you held like this just to help you dig okay. without, even though you can dig with your hands, obviously it made your hand bigger. You didn't scrape up your fingernails. Um, you know, you could uh, just kind of fun. You could put two of them on. And so this was a very simple one piece blow molded uh, thing. I built a prototype, it worked, I tested it and they said, we don't want it. Uh, it's too out there for us. We just want a shovel. Okay. So I, it was, so I took it and that's when I started to hear that you could pitch ideas to toy companies. You didn't just have to freelance for them and do design work, which was work okay. for hire. So I went around and I found a company that wanted to license it. And that was a company called Steven Manufacturing. I don't even remember how I found them in the Midwest and they licensed it. I got a advance. I got a royalty. Uh, it was my first licensing deal. The one thing I didn't get was um, we were unclear on how to do a patent or who would patent it. We thought they would. I would uh, totally mess it up. Nobody, nobody patented it. And within a, a couple of years, they were being knocked off. And eventually, it's been knocked off all over the world. It's 35 years later, <laughs> maybe 30 years later, 32 or so. And, and I guess what I say is I'm proud that I created this, this shareware. I can say... If I would, I would have liked to have made money off it the whole time. I learned a valuable lesson and okay. sort of, but what, okay. how cool is it that the first thing that I licensed is still out there all over the world? Amazing. That's what that so, is. Amazing. I, I love seeing these when I would go to different countries and things. So that was my first, <laughs> a learning experience and also something I'm very proud of. Um, but, you know, in terms of after that, I started to create and invent ideas for other toy companies. All right, let's talk about this puzzle you had mentioned. I, I'm not familiar with it, but it seems like everybody else is. What, am I living in a cave here? Shit, well, Perplexus. This is the game Perplexus. It's a race against time. 
Just roll her out to start the timer and take the ball through the maze. Turn it, tilt it, watch out for the roadblocks. Try to reach the end, but remember the clock is ticking. Faster, faster, faster! Perplexus, a great way to kick back, relax. Uh, help me. And say, ah. Ow! Perplexus. I did it in 50 seconds! New Perplexus, it's about time. New from Next Electronics, batteries not included. Perplexus is, uh, it's a 3D labyrinth that you get, a, you get a ball bearing at the start and you're trying to make your way through the labyrinth. And the difference between it and any previous labyrinth is that you have to move the ball. It keeps changing planes and, and axes. So you don't just go through a flat one. You have to make your way all the way through from beginning to end without the marble falling off. Okay. And it uses both sides of the track. There's actually much more track in here than you can possibly imagine. If you if you laid this all out, it would be you know something like 20 feet of track. It's 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 wow. kind of like an intestine that's wound up. And this was actually the first one. It was an electronic one, and I licensed it to. Uh, this was with a partner, by the way, someone who brought me an initial very rough idea, and I worked with them together. Uh, this friend Michael McGinnis, and we created this, and he's really the genius behind it. I would have to say of what his vision for it. I just sort of made it more toyetic. And we licensed it to uh, Tiger Electronics back in 2000, maybe 1999. They were immediately bought by Hasbro and it was dropped. Hmm. And so then about three or four years later, we started seeing knockoffs in China that were smaller and without the electronics through a very confusing labyrinth of a story ended up getting working with someone, getting the rights back, doing all these things, and eventually became a huge product over the last 10, 15 years, um, eventually selling it to Spin Master, uh, where there's many, many models of this. We just came out with a Perplexus Rubik's mashup because they bought the Rubik's uh, rights. So this is a Perplexus that works like a Rubik's cube. We've had, we're doing a Harry Potter golden snitch version. We're doing that. There's just a lot. It, it's nice. a very, it's turned into a giant line, probably more expansive than Bop it even, um, and more sculptural. So that, that's definitely uh, another highlight of my, of my career. Now let's talk about Bop it for just a minute. You know, are there all the ones, what am I looking at in your back? Your back shelf looks so fascinating. I just want to like, what is that? And and are there all different shapes and designs of Bop? Is that what I'm seeing back there? Yeah, the, the original is sort of like that, that big one you see there that was from a trade show. That was the very first one. That one was based off of this rough prototype, which is the one in my pitch video you can usually find online. Mm -hmm. And, and this is it, this is a piece of foam core, right? That from a front view looks sort of three dimensional. And the concept was bop it, twist it, pull it. And uh, thinking of bopping a hammer against something. What's interesting is that it had a bop, two bops and the final bop it has a bop it on both sides probably just because the hammer originally had two ends to it. And that kind of made it more three-dimensional. There's a lot of subtle things about inventing that, you know, the serendipity that however we translated this to that had enough of this DNA in it that it, that it, who knows if, if this had only had one end, maybe it wouldn't have been as successful. Well, let's talk about, um, let's talk about you on TikTok. What, you know, that's pretty darn popular. We're going to show a few of your TikToks here. How did you get started? Why and when did you do it? And you seem so natural at this whole thing. Thank you. I'm, I, uh, I come from a theatrical family, so it's my chance to ham it up a bit. And, uh, you know, when you pitch toy ideas, you're, you're sort of, it's, that's part of the fun is sort of getting into it. And I got into games because I love connecting with people through games. I think anyone who loves games knows that if we play them, for the competitiveness, we play them for this experience, but it's really about, you can play a game with a stranger and not be a stranger at the end of the game. I, I, I've always loved that. And so I find it sort of happening a bit on social media where I shied away from it for years. And during COVID, I started this TikTok channel, partly to celebrate Bop It's 25 years. And rather than talking about a lot of things, I tried to focus it on 
bop it stories, things that people want to know, and then sort of peppering in some invention stories about some of my other products. I like, it forces me to think like, how, what did happen here? How can I do a one minute story on this? How can I play with people and engage them and, and have fun with it? Um, sometimes I'll throw out questions like, what would you do to make this better? And I'll get a thousand responses. It's, it's amazing. You know, so I love the engagement and uh, I'm hoping to do a lot more with it as I started to, to uh, I'd like to launch a, at some point some of my own products for a, a good cause. And this is my way of, you know, gathering some followers to do that. Dan, what a pleasure meeting you. I think you're amazing and I could not thank you enough for coming on. Can we have you back for more of these? Um, they're too short. I, I could go on forever. I wanted I want people to understand the whole process, good, bad, and ugly about being an inventor. But you gave us a, a glimpse today on you and your 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 life and what you're doing. So I cannot thank you enough. Thank you. I I could go all day, unfortunately. So careful what you wish for. But thank you, Dan. <laughs>